Hey guys, I was about to come on here and say spring is in the air, but winter's in the air. Uh, spring was here yesterday, it's gone today, and that's just how early, it's not even spring yet, okay? It's just been giving us little glimpses of hope. I think it was like 60 degrees yesterday, and in like three days it'll be 60 degrees again, but today it is frigid. But if you look closely, Here's little signs of spring. All my flowers are popping up. Normally, I am like ritualistic on, I start a tray of seeds, I put them on a heat mat. This year, I'm starting more seeds than ever before. And realistically, I don't have 40 feet of heat mat. <laughs> and you know what? I've done a little experiment some tricky stuff, okay, so Rubeckia takes forever to germinate, and it has not germinated yet. Or maybe like a couple here and there. Ooh, I see a couple. Okay, I take that back. It's starting to germinate. Um, the rest of this has not been babied at all. It's in the elements. I do put on a frost cloth if it's going to be really cold, just because that tender new growth, I really don't want to cook or freeze, I should say. Um, but... Things are looking beautiful, and you know what? It might take a little longer for things to germinate, but things are still germinating just fine. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. But keep in mind, this is all cold weather stuff. Uh, heat loving crops, you probably need the heat mat more, or it's gonna take even longer to grow, but I'm feeling like spring is coming. Also, this whole video, I'm so sorry if you can hear plastic whipping. It needs to calm down. Actually, it needs trimmed off, but that's a different story. Uh, because the Wicked Witch of the West must be in town or something. And is blowing wind everywhere. Oh my God, I got really short. But um, that's not what I came here to talk to you about today. What I came here to talk to you about today, and the fact that I only did my upper half, I'm still wearing my sweatpants that's just who I am but I did put makeup on for you but I'm really excited because it is time for everyone no matter what your zone is it's time to start waking your items up so things like sweet potatoes if you um, if you would like to grow your own sweet potatoes from your own slips this year now is time to start waking them up these um, tropical roots take a long time to kind of get going in my experience. Uh, we're in late February now and honestly I could have started them a month ago if I had them. I did have the sweet potatoes because I'm going to use my own sweet potatoes to make slips. I brought one out here just for show. But these are the easiest things uh, to recreate or reproduce I should say. All I do is I take just a flat tray, 1020 tray. The wind needs to settle down. I take a flat tray and I literally just put it in sideways like this. I don't cut it into pieces and I don't uh, do anything special. Now this stuff you will need to put somewhere that is consistently warm. So on a heat mat, or in the warmest part of your house on top of your dryer. I don't have that ex much experience with wearing a mic. Um, I recently started doing that, so I have no idea if you can hear that in the background or not, but it's really stressing me out, so sorry if I'm pausing. It is also time to start waking up your ginger. So what I have here is ginger, and this ginger looks awesome. It looked even better a week ago, but then I left it in the box for that long. So it's drying out a little bit, but that's fine. And um, I also have turmeric that it's time to start that as well. I've never grown turmeric before. I have grown ginger before, so I have some experience, but I'm going to guess that they're pretty similar. They're both um, tropical, like heat, humidity, uh, thriving plants, which is why 
uh, that is my plan for this greenhouse. So if you have watched any of my videos before, you have heard me say that this tunnel that I'm currently in gets really, really hot. It's more important, I found from experience, to put your tunnels, if you're looking into getting high tunnels, figure out where your prevailing winds are. So which direction your wind normally comes out of. So ours comes out of um, the west or the east typically. So we lined our tunnels north to south so that that wind, um, if it's blowing this way, it's blowing through your tunnel if your walls are up, you know, your sidewalls, so that you're getting the airflow. This tunnel is east and west and it does not ventilate well. It gets hot in here and stays hot in here. So I figure rather than trying to mediate or add ventilation or add fans or add any kind of technology, why not work with what I have and grow something in here that will appreciate the heat and the humidity and um, that. So that is why I chose to grow or to try to grow these heat loving plants inside this tunnel. Now, ginger and turmeric are both like powerhouse immunity boosters and I can't think of a much better time to have, you know, your own homemade medicine on hand than um, the times that we are living in right now. It's getting pretty scary out there, you guys. I don't know if you're with the times, but um, it's just natural for me to like to have and do everything myself. So add this to my medicine cabinet um, is what I plan to do in the cabinets of those around us because I'll have some for sale at the end of the season, fingers crossed. Now, I did not buy fancy seed, ginger, or turmeric. So we'll see how this goes. I got online and I saw the prices and I know the amount that I would need to fill up this tunnel and I'm like, there is no way that I can afford that. And so what I did is I Googled it and I came upon this company called Tropical Fruit Box. Here's the box. And I got online and they do have a pre-made eight, they have five pound and eight pound ginger and turmeric boxes. But what I did is I went on to their 16 pound build your own, which is the exact same price, you guys. And I just added only two. I only added turmeric and ginger. I think you could pick like five. And I got 16 pounds for the price of eight. In free shipping, I paid $90 for all of this. And this, like, I can't find ginger like this in the store. So ginger and turmeric are both rhizomes which means that they spread underground and every place that there's an eye, they send up a stem. I cut my finger, I'll spare you the details, but it's a rope burn from Miss Honey. Her and I were at the rodeo the other day, um, but everything's fine now, I hope. Uh, but right here, you can see the little knob. That is where a new shoot will grow. So as long as one of these pieces has one eye on it, it will grow into a brand new plant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down all of this ginger. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to eyeball it and cut it up. I have grown ginger and I've just always grown it from the store, like the organic um, ginger roots you can get at the store. And that is what I've grown. I've grown potatoes from the store. I've grown garlic from the store. Um, all those myths that say they won't sprout, I think they're just myths. Now I do try to get organic whenever I can just to make sure they didn't spray anything that would inhibit growth because they do do that to make um, the things last longer on the shelves. But in my experience, it's always been fine. So even this this bigger knob has like a little baby knob coming off of it and so I know that I can cut this piece my tunnel's gonna blow away <laughs> I'm going to cut them in at least one inch pieces I will I will break this piece down into at least five I would think um, pieces of ginger like this is one I would plant 
Um, this I could even cut into two, but I might leave it as one, or I might cut it, who knows. So I will cut these. year I grew ginger I put them in like a big pot so like a 15 inch or bigger um, pot and I put it on my patio and it was a pretty patio plant but then also at the end of the year I pulled it up and there's a little baby ginger on the bottom so if you don't have room to grow rows of it in a high tunnel it will still do well just keep it make sure it's warm so put it in your house right now. Definitely don't put it outside. I have officially finished splitting on my Dahlia tubers. And you guys, I know I said, hold on, you're foggy. I know I said I might make a video about it, but then it ended up making me really sad. So I didn't make a video about it, but I'm gonna still have Dahlia tubers. But what, tell me why did it target my favorites? You know, like my very favorite ones, dead. Um, but anyway, so this is inside of my cold room right now i cannot tell if the screen is foggy or it's my eyeballs um and inside i have these racks uh with lights now my husband kindly did this for me yesterday and i didn't specify that i needed two lights per rack so right now you see one but if you wanted to do this um, at your house you need two because these on the edge will start to stretch towards the center because there's not enough light um but these are my greenhouse peppers, you guys. All of these I potted up into soil balls. Last year was the first year that I tried this method and I loved it. All my plants were so happy. Um, I feel like they grew really well, like better than the four inch pots that, I, that people typically use to put their tomatoes and peppers in. And which is strange because this is less soil than would be in a four inch pot, I feel. But um, it's the same reason why soil blocks work so well. Once the roots hit the edge of the block, they're air pruned. So they don't get root bound inside the pot and wrap around and around. Um, they just, there's less transplant shock and they grow healthier, happier plants overall. Now these guys don't look super duper happy because I just transplanted them last evening. Um, but they'll be fine. Look, I thought I was going to do it this way and I was like, absolutely not. And I've got some greenhouse tomatoes starting, which is exciting. And some eucalyptus over here and more peppers. And I need to turn my heater up, I think because it was warmer yesterday than it is today. Um, so I just have a little space heater down here on the ground. Right now it's 53 in here. Um, and I keep like a little thermometer that tells me, I bought this on Amazon, but it'll tell me how low it got, which is why I knew that my Dahlia tubers were gonna be dead because I came out here and it said 23. <laughs> and I was like, oh, maybe it didn't, but it definitely killed them. So since this room is warm, consistently warm, I will put a heat mat here on this bottom rack and I will just line up my trays 
uh, of uh, my ginger and turmeric and sweet potatoes. And then honestly, probably also all over the floor because I'm gonna have so many trays. But anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how you can do it not fancy obviously i have this makeshift cold room that not everybody has but you could be doing this in your basement in your laundry room on top of your dryer anywhere you can squeeze it in i think now probably more than ever before it's it's important to have food at your house for you um i know personally my household hasn't really felt the effects of food increases a whole lot just because i have tons of stuff at home that I had preserved from last season or that I specifically grew like the root crops um, to harbor away for me. Now, am I sick of eating potatoes, sweet potatoes, green beans? Like, yes, obviously. Um, but do we have good food to eat and money in the bank? At least a little more than if I was having to go to the grocery store every week? Um, so no matter where you at, <laughs> where you at, no matter where you're at, I think we should all be growing a little more, sharing with our neighbors a little more, um, preserving a little more, and uh, stocking up on books uh, that will teach you how to do more and preserve more and home remedies. I know everybody has different opinions, but I'm pretty sure we can all feel the tension that is right now, I don't think that, I know that I haven't ever lived through a time as volatile as this one. And I know that when you have the confidence to know that you can eat no matter what, um, it feels good and it lets you rest a little easier at night. Um, I just got my tomato seeds in the mail, you guys. So I'm gonna be shooting my annual, um, what tomato varieties am I growing? I know you're all looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Every year I tell myself I'm going to just pare it down. I'm only going to pick the basics. And every year I'm like, who are you kidding? You are not going to just grow the basics. Um, <laughs> but anyway, there's still time for you if you haven't, um, if you haven't start, wait. But anyway, there's still time for you if you want to start your own ginger and turmeric. I will put the website I'm not affiliated at all. I literally found them on a random Google search. Um, but I will put the website that I got mine from just in case you're curious. But you can also just go to the grocery store. Um, I just live in the boonies of Indiana and we don't have turmeric at our grocery store. <laughs> we do have sweet potatoes and ginger though. But I already have this. But I think that's enough rambling for me. I'm going to go get busy planting all of my turmeric and ginger and sweet potatoes so that um, they can go out and get growing this spring. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time.